okay so let's move on to the next question in this question also we have to use integration and use for different elements we have to find the electric field and then add up add them up but in this question a disk is given and the disk is a thin disk of inner and outer radius r1 and r2 respectively has aerial charge density sigma okay so like uh, it is between r1 and r2 only the uh, charge density sigma so find e at point p at distance x from the center on the axis and describe the motion of a particle of charge minus 1 coulomb placed at point p and the third part is if x is much much less than r will it be shm if yes find t t means time period of shm so shrikan will tell how to solve the answer see uh, basically this is similar to the previous question but a little different uh here instead of a ring we have a disk but if you think we can sp split the disk into small small rings so this is the disk so we can split it into sp small small rings yes and then we have to calculate e due to these small rings and then finally add up this is what this is the simplest way we can do okay so let me write the e due to a ring remember from the question la previously which we solved we got e is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q x by r square plus x square power 3 by 2 yeah we just did it in the first question in the second question itself exactly but here q is the charge of the ring so let us find our q in this case okay so for finding out q let us let us take the ring at a distance of r okay okay of outer radius r plus dr hmm so what will be the volume of the disc vol volume of the small ring it will be equal to Sig sigma into 2 pi, pi into r plus dr square minus r square so from this okay, if you for the area of that uh, small ring, ring. Okay, okay so if you solve this you will get it is equal to uh 2 pi r dr taking dr much much less than r we'll get this formula for the volume so q will be is for the area of ha huh, q will be sigma into 2 pi r dr, DR. this is our say dq so using this if we write our small de which is of course place which is uh, directed along this direction using symmetry okay it will be equal to k into sigma 2 pi r dr x by r square plus x square 3 by 2 okay now you have to solve this using integration you have to integrate see from logic all the ring elements will have e in this direction only okay so we can simply integ integrate the all the small de elements as if it's a scalar yes ha huh. since there is no so just in the same point in the same direction ha huh. they are all in the same direction so we can integrate so we'll find that e by integrating from say 0 to e r is from r1 to r2 r2 to find e is equal to minus 2k sigma pi x by r square plus x square 
So, the first part of the question has been solved. Second part of the question is describe the motion of the particle of charge minus okay. one coulomb. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to put the limits for this equation. That is R1, R2. So, the answer will be E is equal to minus 2 K sigma pi x 1 by R1 square plus x square under root sorry R2 minus 1 by R1 square plus x square under root so this is the answer for first part okay the second part says describe the motion of the particle of charge minus 1 coulomb placed at P so this is point P so since since we have assumed that since it has been given that lambda is greater than zero, sorry sigma is greater than zero. Yes. So a ma charge of minus one coulomb will uh, be attracted towards the center. So it will tend to travel towards the center, and once it reaches the center, it won't feel any force. Okay. It will continue moving, and ag again as it moves it will feel a force in this direction yes so it will be an oscillatory motion hmm so will it be an SHM let us find out if it's an SHM under the condition that x is much much less than r so if x is much much less than r then we can write then we can neglect x square from this and this okay so this equation becomes minus 2k sigma pi x 1 by r2 minus 1 by r1 yes exactly now if you see uh, electric field E is proportional to x the distance which implies force is proportional to x x so whenever force is directly proportional to negative see we have a negative sign also of x then the motion will be simple harmonic motion yes when the force is directly proportional to minus x the motion is simple harmonic yes so in this case the motion will be simple harmonic haan to chaliye time period pata karte hain uh, time period pata karne ke liye we will be using the formula a is equal to minus omega square x and इससे हम लोग omega पता करेंगे और उसको लगाएंगे time period is equal to 2 pi by omega yes तो using this calculate कर लिए खुद try कर लीजिए time period will come out to be mass r1 r2 by 2k sigma pi r2 minus r1 okay so this is the value of the time period which you can easily find out after we have find the value of electric field so we will just multiply it by the charge to get the force acting on the 1 coulomb charge body and then we will find the time period so let's Yeah, so this is a very interesting problem. It is a problem based on the electric field lines that we have discussed in the theory. So th the question is the electric field lines between two charges Q1 and Q2 are shown and the metal block is placed between them. Okay, so uh, Shrikant will tell the rest of the parts and solve them. So, uh, so first of all, uh, you can see these lines and based on these lines, you have to answer these questions. The first part is find the mistakes and make appropriate corrections okay so let us analyze each line okay so if you look at this line it is originating from q and it goes to q2, q2. yes uh, if we assume that q1 is positive and q2 is negative 
yes. then there won't be any problem yes hmm. since most of the lines are origi- originating from q1 and ending up in q2 we can it's a fair enough approximation that yes that q1 uh, is positive q2 is negative and okay the next next uh, line if we see if we look at this line there is a problem with this line because if you look at this angle that this line is making it is not equal to 90 field lines electric field lines should always be perpendicular to the surface surface of a metal ha uh-huh. this is because uh, in an equipotential surface there are no surface uh, sur- surfacial electric uh, field components that yes. means that electric field can only be perpendicular okay only be perpendicular yes agar aisa hua ki electric field hai then charges will move accordingly to nullify that electric field so it is not possible so this is wrong so correction would have, would be to make it something like this there is one more problem with this and this that there can't be electric field existing inside a metal so these two portions have to be erased is yes, so, because my electric field inside the metal is zero so inside the metal uh, metal is zero so so we have made the appropriate, uh, appropriate correction this there is no electric field inside and it seems perpendicular, perpendicular. yes okay. okay the next line if you look at this line at this point you cannot draw a tangent at this point so yes 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 if you define field lines it is such that when you when you draw a tangent at that point you will get the direction of electric field yeah that is how electric field lines are defined and it is not possible for such a line to exist where you cannot draw a tangent so this has to be corrected mm, yeah the, we cannot draw tangent at that uh, there so obviously the there was a problem with the electric field line so we just corrected it and exactly uh, Huh. and one more thing if we notice this line see most of the lines are going out of this so this might be positive, positive charge, charge but this one line is entering it it is not possible yes positive charge always field lines will emerge out of positive charge yes so the appropriate correction would be this yes we can do chalo let's move on to the next part find mod q1 by mod q2 see from the definition of uh, field lines uh, we talked about relative densities being proportional to uh, relative electric fields and yeah, from that uh, we can also conclude that a ratio of charges is equal to ratio of uh, number of field lines say n1 emerging out of q1 and number of field lines n2 going into q2 yes uh do you get this see from the fact that we can compare density field line density to electric field and from yes we discuss in the theory itself that the density of electric field lines tells us the uh, like the relative relative uh, great uh, relative relative strength of the electric field so If you compare by that, we can easily uh, find the ratio of Q1 by Q2 according to the number of field lines emerging or uh, coming coming to the coming to the charge charge particle. Uh-huh. See, this this will be proportional. Okay. The next part is direction of E at point P is where is P? See, this is P. So direction of simply you have to draw a tangent. and this is the direction of e at point p yes next part a particle of charge 1 coulomb is placed at p will it move along path 1 so this is p and this is path 1 so what what do you think i don't think that it should move to path 1 because it is only the electric field lines and electric field lines don't tell the path length they just tell the that at a particular point if you draw the tangent you will get the direction of electric field so even if you like draw the tangent to the electric field uh, field we, we can see from the direction of the electric field that it it will not follow that path it will go 
uh, above that path because the force is acting in that direction. So I don't think that you should follow the path one. Exactly, very well said. So that that sums up our question. Okay, so the next question is based on the calculation of the potential energy, the electrostatic potential energy. Okay, so we all we learned in the theory that electrostatic potential energy always occurs in pairs. Okay, so if you want to calculate for like n par n charge particles, you have to find total electrostatic potential energy of the system. There will be n C two combinations. Okay, and you have to sum up all of them to find the total electrostatic potential energy. Okay, so the question we have we have is find huh. the work needed to assemble the three point charges with charges. One coulomb, two coulomb, and three coulomb in the given manner, and the figure is given to us. Exactly, you very well associated the work needed to assemble these three charges to the potential energy of the system. Uh, that 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 uh, relation is very important. So we discussed that uh, we should use principle of superposition. That says that. in uh, potential energy of say 1 coulomb charge and 2 coulomb charge is independent of yes uh -huh. so we will what we'll do is we'll add all these individually and that would that will give us the total electrostatic potential energy Ex exactly so it's very easy so say ha huh, it will be equal to summation of all that would be 1 by 4 pi epsilon not just take it into common 1 into 2 by 1 square plus 2 into 3 by 1 square plus 3 into 1 by 1 square that is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not 2 plus 6 plus 3 that is equal to 11 so 11 so answer is 11 by 4 pi epsilon not so if you look at this we made basically made three pairs so if i give you a problem in which four charges are there or five charges are there how many pairs should you make like uh, you will also learn this formula in mathematics that if like there are n things you got want to pick Uh, R things at a time. Then there is a formula for N C R. So like we have, we can choose any two opt, any two particles and find the put their uh, the the potential energy of that pair. So total number of pairs that is what we have to calculate. So if there are four four particles, number of pairs will be four C two. If there are five particles, number of pairs will be five C two. Exactly. You are exactly that is what you are doing. You are taking n number of particles and selecting two particles at a time. so that pretty much sums up our question and one thing is very important uh, that is the work it is you know uh, it is as if we need to find the work needed to assemble and it is nothing but the total potential electrostatic potential energy of the system that de according to the definition work needed to assemble the system is nothing but the electrostatic potential energy of the system exactly always keep that in mind and relation between work and potential energy are always important okay so this is also a very interesting problem and it is based on the relation between electric field and the electric electrostatic potential yeah you so, have already learned this relation if you remember yes we talked it, uh, we discussed in the, in the theory part so the question is that the electric field in the given region is given by Electric field is equal to minus k into y i cap plus x j cap. So what we got to find is we got to find the electrostatic potential. Then in the second part, in which electrostatic potential is given, and using that we have to find the electrostatic electrostatic field. Uh, exactly. So if you remember the relation between them, you will find that the formula of V can be obtained using V is equal to minus integration of e bar dot. dr yes where 
डी आर इज इक्वल टू डी एक्स आई कैप प्लस डी वाई जे कैप प्लस डी जेड के कैप ओके सो दैट मेक्स इट इक्वल टू के वाई आई कैप प्लस एक्स जे कैप डॉट डी एक्स आई कैप प्लस डी वाई जे कैप प्लस डी जेड के कैप ओके सो दिस इज सिंपल डॉट प्रोडक्ट एंड द रिजल्ट वुड बी के इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ डी एक्स वाई हाउ डिड इट हाउ डू हाउ डू वी गेट एक्स वाई डी ऑफ एक्स वाई बिकॉज आई नो आफ्टर डूइंग द डॉट प्रोडक्ट वी विल हैव वाई डी एक्स प्लस एक्स डी वाई एक्जैक्टली वाई डी एक्स प्लस एक्स डी वाई दैट इज इक्वल टू डी ऑफ एक्स वाई सो हाँ वन थ्री गेट दिस वी इज इक्वल टू के इन टू एक्स वाई प्लस कॉन्स्टेंट वाई इज दिस कॉन्स्टेंट अपियरिंग लाइक apart from integration its relevance is uh we cannot be defined until and unless we have set a datum or a reference potent a uh, reference point uh, we have given a reference uh, like given a point a particular potential yes for example in finding the electrostatic potential uh we always Like choose like we uh, say uh, that we refer to infinity as v as, is equal as to as a reference point because uh. at infinity, for example, for a point charge, the electrostatic potential is k q by r. But uh, at infinity, r is very high, so we can say that infinity electrostatic potential is zero. So that is the reference point, and uh, that is the point uh, respect to which we find the other potential of other other points. Exactly. So we have to set a reference point, and since in this question no reference. Point was set. We will get a constant. So the next part of the question is uh, electric potential V is given by V is equal to x y square plus three z x. Find E. This is also another simple question. V is equal to x y square plus three z x. So using E x is equal to Minus do v by do x, we get e x is equal to minus y square plus three z i cap. Yes. E y is equal to two x y j cap. Okay. Using do v by do y. Okay. Ha. Huh. And similarly, we do it for the e z. Is equal to three x k cap. Okay. It's a very simple question, and remember this formula: dr is equal to dx i cap plus dy j cap plus dz k cap. Yes. So that's how we have uh, got to the answer to this problem. So this is a very easy problem based on the relation between electric field and electrostatic potential. Mm-hmm.